She is a financial planner and advisor. She's the founder and president of Zinnia Wealth Management. She's also a popular radio show host. There's a way to have the money to market and have protected growth. This holistic approach will help people get to and through retirement. Absolutely. You have to change the way that you think. It's not about having these double-digit returns anymore. Things are changing, and you have to have an advisor that's keeping up with the changes. Your outcome is going to become very desirable if you have some sort of coach helping you along the way. And our next recipient for the Media and Communications XP, Sharice. 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 Sharice Rivers. Do not have to risk all your money in the market to survive because it's about the retirement dream. We go, Mikey. Pre game glitches. Can they see and hear us? Yeah, yep. and there am I. And let's switch. The air. you're live. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. This is our second live episode, Facebook Live, with uh, myself, Sharice Rivers, your host of Retirement Coffee Talk. Uh, President, CEO of Zinnia Wealth Management. And I want to give you a pregame because we're still new at Facebook Live. I'm not sure. We have Mikey behind the scenes. He's my producer. He's just making sure everything's rolling pretty smoothly. And I think we might have had our first glitch, but it's okay. We will get better at this. Thank you for tuning in. My job is to inspire, educate, and help you get to retirement and beyond. Okay. So this is a a place for you to come and ask questions, get real live questions answered to the best of the ability I can answer them. And if I can't get to the answer, you know, I'll get right back to you on it. Um, you know, any finance questions, we had lots of great questions last week, week about home loans and that kind of stuff. And where do I park some cash? So I want you to feel free as we're going through this to ask questions because uh, other people who are tuning in might have the same questions. So, don't be afraid to ask. And so we're going to start out with a quick market update. Then I'm going to educate you on some things that we're seeing and ideas that we're, we're going to be using moving forward. Um, but so let's just kind of get started. Pre-game, just forgive us. If it goes black, just hold tight. Uh, we're still working out those glitches. I just don't want people to um, tune out. Okay, so there's a lot of noise in the market. We have COVID-19. Anybody over it? <laughs> COVID-19 um, is a day we will always remember being socially distant. And um, it'll be that same story that our grandparents told us. We walk 10 miles, we'll get a loaf of bread, right? No joke. We're, we're, we're uh, stuck at home. But markets have been a little funky this week. Uh, jobless claims came out. So, you know, more jobs are, are gone. A lot of people are, are going back to work, but not enough people. I think 5 million people went back to work out of 3.2 million, uh, we have a lot of work ahead of us. Um, unfortunately, markets are going up and they're going down. And, and Wednesday, uh, with all the noise that was out there, it was kind of sideways and even down. And today it starts to take off. So it's Groundhog Day every day, get used to it. This is gonna be our new norm for a while. Um, even if the stock market powers up, unfortunately, I don't think the economy is gonna be able to keep up with the stock market um, and the math just, basically proves it right, meaning uh, if there's 3.2 million people out of jobs and jobless claims are climbing almost to 20% on Friday, um, there's supposed to be some more information on that, but uh, if we get to 30%, we're in big trouble, people. Um, so hold on tight. I'm very optimistic. Everybody knows I'm very optimistic, but lately I've been a little bit pessimistic. But the goal today is to help you with finances and questions and what to do with our cash and should I refinance my home? Should I take money out of my 401k and so on and so forth? So let's get started. So wonderful thing, 30 states has opened, okay? Meaning social distancing, they started easing. So that means uh, we have restaurants that are allowed to service food as long as the tables are six feet apart. And so not all states are not um, doing it fully, which I'm shocked. I, I figured by today we would have gotten more news on that. And here on my notes, it looks like still only 30. So there's a lot of damage being done by not having all the states open open for 
uh, you know, dinners and that kind of stuff. But I want to dive into that in just a few minutes. But unfortunately, they're not moving fast enough to keep our economy moving and grooving. Uh, so let's move on to what happened in the stock market this week. It looks like utilities and energy, discretionaries, everything, those things went down, went down. But the Nasdaq started growing, and we have to thank the uh, wonderful company called Amazon and Netflix that we all uh, like to watch at night, and more so than ever, I think that is going. That is the one of the biggest tools moving forward for kids and adults to have some saneness at home. Uh, as we move forward, I don't know if you've heard of Wells Fargo. Anybody have a Wells Fargo bank account? All I know is I am done with Wells Fargo. I actually canceled my Wells Fargo business banking account a couple of months ago. I am done. If anybody recalls Wells Fargo having some issues last year and the year before that, and their whole m model was accounts with them turned out to be pretty fraudulent. Here's the unfortunate thing. News came out today that I'm reading about. Uh, now there's some potential fraud for the PPP loan that they were not uh, making a necessity for people who really needed these small companies who needed a loan. So now they're under investigation because they were cherry picking people and picking people with higher incomes and bigger businesses and that kind of stuff. So of course, Wells Fargo would be on the forefront when it comes to that. So since I'm no longer a Wells Fargo account person, I'd be happy to talk about them a little bit more as we hear about them. So the moral of the story is just because they're a big bank and they're a big possible brokerage firm doesn't mean they're doing the right thing for you. I have a pretty good feeling there's not too many fiduciaries over there. Fiduciaries, remember what that is? I'm a fiduciary financial advisor. The fiduciary is supposed to look out for your best interest before their own pocketbook, share continued education and continue planning for your entire life, and that should never, ever end. So just remember that word fiduciary. We'll crack down on that word a little bit later. Uh, Trump news. Hey, you know what? I'm pretty proud of Trump today. Trump, he's not making a complete fool of himself lately. Does anybody else notice that? Trump, um, he's kind of containing himself. I think he's growing into um, his, his shoes over there at the White House. I think he's doing a pretty good job. I'm not leaning one left or right here. I just want to say he's doing some great things. He's also taking some measures talking about that PPP loan. They found out some really, really large companies got this protection loan slash grant and they shouldn't have. So now he's having, he's going to be hitting some pretty huge fines by May 14th if they, those loans are not sent back. So it was incredible because there's a lot of small businesses that needed these loans but did not get them. Some of them shut their doors because they did not get these loans in time. And so it's crippling, you know, people getting their jobs back, of course. Okay, um, next on the chopping block, let's see, Miss Katie, what'd she have to do for me today? Oh, Governor DeSantis. Here's really some something very interesting he said. He said he received 200,000 COVID-19 antibody tests for the state of Florida. That is wonderful. I wonder how they're going to distribute those. Are they going to give five per city? Um, there's no word on how many more that are coming. Um, the good news is we have some, not enough for even one city to get testing. The goal is, just so you know, let's be optimistic here, is to have drive-through testing centers throughout the state of Florida. The only problem is we're just not getting enough tests. Um, they're doing swabs or doing, they're doing lots of different where you can just pull right through these drive throughs There's a couple here in, um, there's one in the villages that I know so far, but the problem is, is there's hundreds of thousands of people who want these tests, but we can't give it to them because we don't have enough test strips and all that jazz. So um, that's good news. We're starting somewhere. I guess that's the way to look at it. The other thing he talked about is that in the state of Florida, 25% capacity in restaurants now. So that was positive. He pushed that forward. He said he even feels comfortable going out and um, sitting at a restaurant with his family, which I thought was really interesting. If you really want to get a really good kick, when I read this part, I about died. He's even considering taking it to the state legislature to find out if we can take drinks to go. I wonder if that actually means we can't get a DUI. I'm not sure this is going to get passed, but I thought it was a, a, a nice chuckle, a ni nice thing for him to do. 
but drinks on the go. Sorry, Governor DeSantis, bad idea. So, um, but nice thought. So I wonder what was on his mind when he was waiting in line at the restaurant. So basically the market hasn't changed a whole lot. We're going up and going down. There's not a whole lot of new news. Um, I really want to stay away from the strategy, uh, strategy. Wow, can't get my words out. Anyway, we want to stay away from COVID-19 as much as possible. Um, just do what you're told, basically. Stay away from people. Keep your groups in small order. Um, if you go out, wear your mask, wash your hands. So nothing's changed there. So we're going to move on with that because uh, I'm on with the, uh, the new. Let's talk about retirement planning. So we have a lot of people tuning in between the ages of 35 all the way up to age 80 actually so our first facebook live last week and we noticed there was a huge group and so that's why we call it getting you to retirement and beyond because we want to be able to help everybody because it really does help everybody even if you're in retirement there's going to be some tips i'm going to say for the younger people that you can actually take advantage of so let's start with the first thing on the chopping block it was interesting cnbc came out with saying check your allocations because your allocations might not be where they're supposed to be and they said should you be considering if you're a young person should you be thinking about possibly taking some of the investment you have in your 401ks or your iras and actually taking some of that bucks and putting them into uh, stocks that took a very big uh, nosedive and so when it comes to young people my personal opinion is you have nothing but time on your side and it is a possibility to go out and buy those but be careful because this is where you need a financial advisor i had a couple of people over the last six months say sheree should i buy norwegian stock should i buy carnival cruise stock or should i buy royal uh royal and i just said well be very careful and tread lightly on the cruise stock yes they plummeted they took a big hit but you have to look at the balance sheet. You have to see what they have on the docket, what they have going out versus coming in. And we know nothing's coming in. And I said, of all the companies, the one I would probably least be in favor of investing with was Norwegian. And I like Norwegian, but after I had looked at everything and I said, I'm not sure I would be even as a young person um, ready to invest in the company if it could possibly file bankruptcy. And of course, any of these companies can, but that's why I use a financial advisor. So. Two people came to me specifically. They, they were in two different households, but they were friends. And I said, I said, buy some um, Carnival Cruise Line and maybe buy some Royal Caribbean. And I said, you'll make less money on the Royal Caribbean deal and a little bit more on, on, on Carnival. And you'll really make some serious bucks if you buy Norwegian. But man, that's speculative. And that is a huge risk. I'm not sure I was personally ready um, to put money into. So I did not personally. Um, so one of them did and one of them didn't. And they're so mad because they didn't listen to me. And his buddy said, I'm sure glad I listened to you, Sheree. So for some reason, you're definitely forward thinking. And you know what you're talking about. And, you know, I really do feel like I know what I'm talking about here because I follow the stock market. I actually look at things in depth. That's the value of having a financial advisor. So be careful if you're younger and you're taking risks like that. I even have people in retirement I personally have been carving just a little bit of their portfolio, just a little bit, taking it out of the active management side, saying we don't really need this money, this portion for 10 years. So why don't we buy some of these stocks out there that took a hit that are still down 60%? And hey, if they double in five years, you're not gonna be upset with a big double, are you? So no, you're not. So doubling um, would be the most beautiful thing Nobody can ever guarantee that that's going to happen, but it could happen. Hey, I just had my phone drop, everybody. So in case I scare the tar at anybody, I'm going to reach out to Mikey. Mikey, how are we looking? Everything looks good? All right. Everything still looks good. So possible glitch. Last week I had this happen to me, and that's because not all my equipment was in. So it actually just got here today. So we'll be ready to rock and roll next week. So let me get back on track here on stock. So that was the young people. Now, CNBC here. I'm trying to read word by word so I wanted to be exact. They said, if you are already older and in retirement, consider something safer. Maybe move out of those uh, stocks and mutual funds that have overperformed and buy more fixed income as an investment. Um, consider something safer. So when they say fixed income, here, here's the, it's just a blanket statement. They're thinking of bonds, treasuries, and that sort of thing. And if you've listened to my radio show every weekend, 
So the last two years, I've been really harping on bonds, talking about when interest rates go up, your values of your bonds go down, right? So if your value of your bonds go down, then your portfolio is going down. So we said maybe for the next seven to 10 years, let's have a little less uh, possible bonds in our portfolio so we can take that pressure off our portfolio. Well, CNBC is saying basically that's what you should do. Here's the interesting thing. Interest rates aren't really going up right now, right? Interest rates go up when the stock market is cooking, the, 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 which is cooking, but really it's when the economy is cooking and we're not cooking. The economy is definitely not cooking. We're lagging. So they're probably going to keep interest rates ultimately low for a while. So this technically is not a terrible time to add some bonds to your portfolio. Remember, everything I, I'm, I'm relaying to you, it's not for you individually. It's it's a blanket statement and just words because I have to be very careful on what advice I give everyone because I know you're all at different ages. This is more for a one-on-one -on -one appointment just to sit down and talk to me, do a conference call. Hey, Sheree, should I have these bonds? Should I have these treasuries? What should I be doing? So it just kind of gives you the idea. But what we personally have been doing versus using a ton of bonds in our clients' portfolios, we've been using indexing strategies because here's the deal. Bonds are going to start going down eventually as soon as interest rates go back up. So if the economy starts cooking and interest rates start to go up, guess what's going to happen? Well, bond values are going to go down. So we're taking the pressure away because that's a lot of work for the financial advisor. So every six months, say, okay, we're going to sell these bonds. We're going to get out of these bonds. We're going to do this with these bonds. And if you all know this, you've already been through that. There's not too many financials that are actually actively doing that, unfortunately. So we've kind of taken the pressure away from the bond world and we're using indexing strategies because the indexing strategies, if the interest rates go up, we don't lose value on the investment on that asset. If interest rates go down, it doesn't matter. We're not losing value. Our principal is always protected and we're just gaining as the stock market gains without the losses, without the fees. So there's a lot of transparency. So if you haven't heard about these indexing strategies I'm talking about and you're nearing or you're in your retirement red zone, that's five to 10 years before retirement. And if you're definitely in retirement, this is an absolute must add to your portfolio. There's no question about it because you don't want to be messing around with your portfolio saying, what bond should I get? Am I in the right bond? And if you sell the bond at the right time, you take a hit. So remember, this is just kind of being diversified, having new strategies come to the table at different times. Indexing strategies weren't always out there and they weren't always a great option, but now um, for our office staff, I have people calling my staff and myself all the time saying, Sharice, thank goodness we did the indexing strategies because it, it just blew everything else away, which it truly did. So it's been giving us a lot of confidence and we've been using it for a long, long time. And you get to use big time managers like JP Morgan and all those guys, Merrill Lynch, Barclays, um, but without all the fees and all the losses. So something to think about when you're listening and reading this stuff out there, all this noise, like when CNBC says, go to Safer. I don't want you personally going into your 401k or going into your IRAs and saying, they said, buy something safer. Let's sell some of these stocks or mutual funds and let's go into this bond when you really know nothing about that bond. And so use us as a resource. We'd be happy um, to help you there. I have a lot more to say, but Mikey, before I go any further, are there any questions so far about what I've been talking about bonds and the safe strategies and that kind of stuff? Property taxes. Great question. I'll have to dig in a little bit deeper for next week, but property taxes, I assume this, um, taxes go up, right? Um, property taxes can be changed. And so if, if taxes don't expire till 2025 for the normal person, for the marginal tax rates, and we have till 2025, do I think they can change other taxes? Yeah, property taxes could go up. Um, what if people aren't buying homes? Um, what if we have a lot of foreclosures? So it, it is one way they hedge to to for these balance sheets. So I'm crashing and burning two times in a row. So property taxes, I'll look into that. I'll see what they're saying out there on the forefront about it. I haven't heard a whole lot of talk, but when I'm just using common sense, I'm going to make the assumption it's going to go up unless they're trying to keep property taxes down just for the, the, the sheer purposes to get people out there buying again. So there'll be some 
so we'll, we'll find out on that one. So good question though. So Mikey, make sure I, I dig into that one a little bit deeper next week. Any other questions before we move on? Okay, okay, we'll save that one for later. Okay, so let's talk about um, what if you're already retired? What are some uh, discussions we need to go through? Uh, first of all, let's, let's just make sure if you're already retired, we have cash on hand. You wanna make sure there's plenty of cash and we're, because we don't, and I would even say two to three years worth of cash in times like this, or, or, or things that are so safe that they cannot bobble whatsoever that you can live on income. So we've gotten lots of calls the last six weeks and said, Cherise, we're living off four and 5% of our investments in the stock market. People I've never talked to before. And they're telling me, I have to pull, you know, the three and $4,000 out every month and the market's going down and I cannot recoup any of these gains as I'm pulling money out, what do I do? And I always ask what my first question is, do you have any CDs? Do you have any money markets? Do you have any cash? And I'm like, yeah, I got like $40,000 or something like that. And I'll say, okay, we'll stop pulling money out of the market for this time being and start using some of that cash because you don't want to pull money out of the market to live on when it's devalued. That's the worst thing you can do. It's a really great way to run out of money also. So let's make sure we're clear that. So that was a question we had last week that I wanted to address this week. So making sure we have a good emergency fund. And even with an emergency fund, I want you to be careful. A lot of people have a lot of cash. You are stockpiling a lot of cash right now. Some cash is good. But remember, if you are not investing some of that cash, you will lose to inflation every year. So if inflation goes up 5% by next year and is still sitting in cash, you just lost 5%. So 5% is a really big number. And so a lot of people think having money in the bank is safe. Yeah, it's safe. You've got the FDIC insured up to a certain amount, but it's not safe because you, you, you still lose. It's just a different way to lose money. So let's make sure we don't have too much cash in there. And you're probably wondering, well, Sharice, you just said, make sure I have enough money to live on for the next three years in case the mar stock market doesn't come back or in case it does keep going downwards. Well, that's when you give us a call and you reach out to us because there is another way to invest, have your money rather liquid and still be able to live off, live off the money and possibly make money. So being uh, all cash having it in the bank is not a great idea. Okay. Now the other question we had from last week was, um, what about the required minimum distribution, Sharice? And, and that some people were really confused. And basically the CARES Act said, because of the coronavirus, you don't have to take a required minimum distribution this year. So that just means if you're 70 and a half and above any of your retirement accounts you were pulling out of, you don't have to pull out of this year. So far, you'll have to pull out next year, but not this year. So we just want people to know that. Uh, so be, so don't feel like you have to take it. But I am recommending if you're used to taking it anyways and you're used to paying the tax bill and taking that money, why don't we just take advantage of this opportunity and roll it to a Roth IRA? So it kind of gets into the tax um, discussion. And Roth IRAs, we're going to talk a lot about next week, but we'll go ahead and kind of just dive in a little bit. Why don't we pull money out of the IRAs? We're already going to pay tax on it. Roll it to a Roth IRA. And you're probably thinking, okay, Sharice, what is the reason for a Roth IRA? Well, the whole reason for a Roth IRA is that it's tax, uh, it's tax free. Whatever, whatever it grows to, and you pull money out later, as long as you're 59 and a half and you've had it for five years, there's no taxes on it. And right now, most retirees are sitting on this ticking time bomb, and these are your retirement accounts. You're going to have to pay a, a tons of taxes on it when you live on this money. So the question is, should we start rolling some of that IRA to a Roth? I would say yes. I think at, um, I would say 99% of the people out there should be considering rolling some of their IRAs over to a Roth. You do have to be 59 and a half and older to do that, okay? But if you're younger than 59 and you're still working, you can contribute to a Roth, which is a good thing, uh, depending on your age, between six and seven thousand dollars a year. And there's some income thresholds. If you make too much money, then you can't contribute. And so we will dive into the rules of the Roth IRA next week. OK, um, so it's definitely something to think of. I would say take advantage of it. Taxes expire in 2025. Why aren't we doing it already? Why aren't the financial advisors advising you? Because if you don't have a ton of cash and everything's in IRAs and you have to get a new roof on your house and pull $20,000 out of your IRA to pay for a new roof, we'll go ahead and pull $25,000 out because you got to pay the taxes on the 25. So it would be nice to have some Roth IRA money sitting there to say, hey, 
I got to pay $20,000 for a roof. I can take this money and I don't have to pay taxes on it. It's a beautiful thing. So I highly, highly recommend it. Okay. Here's another one that came out. It says, if you're 10 years away from retirement, it says, check yourself. I always say this is a perfect, perfect time because a lot of people say right now I have 10 years. Sharice, I could sit out this storm and retire in 10 years and not have anything to worry about. And does that mean I think you should go sell your stocks at a loss right now? No, if you have 10 years to retire, I wouldn't say sell your stocks. So you're taking a loss and you have time to make it up. You have a little bit more time versus somebody who's retiring in five years or somebody who's retiring in, in, in one year. So I would say let's do a um, check your work appointment. And the reason why I said that is because you might have a plan but you don't have a real plan. You might think you're diversified, but you're not really diversified. And you might have actually saw that as markets were tanking recently. And um, you might say, well, gosh, I lost 30%. I really thought I was safe. Um, how did I lose 30%? But the, the beautiful thing is the market came back up and now you might only be at a loss of 20%. But this is a great time. You have 10, 10 good years to plan to consider, hey, should we put some money into a Roth? Hey, maybe I need to check my work. I need to make sure I'm in the right place at the right time. And hey, should I take, Sharice might be right. Maybe I should take advantage of some of these valued stock. And so if that's the case, I'm going to tell you, no better time than now. So I'm having a clear glitch here. I know my producer is going to kill me. You guys just hold tight here. I cannot figure out why I keep dropping this. We only had one issue last time. One drop. We are on drop three. <laughs> How bad does that look, Mikey? He says, I'm good. You're so nice. Okay. So let's move forward on that. Uh, so check your work. So definitely get in touch with us. Let's check your work. Um, we start with a, a conference call, just kind of dialing in, say, hey, where are you at? What do you, what's it looking like? And then we want to run some reports and just show you, hey, if there's, there's a hole, let, let's fix it. You have 10 years to fix it. Let's fix it. Hey, do I need to save more to retire in 10 years? Um, so we want to do the math and help you figure that out. Okay. Moving forward. Okay. Oh, we got one on Susie Orman. Everybody knows I love Susie Orman. I love uh, Dave Ramsey. And I know most of you are listening probably do too. They might have some things that you don't like. Um, therefore, uh, I'm in the same boat. So when we're looking at um, Clark Howard and Susie Orman and Dave Ramsey, they're speaking for the masses. So they can't speak to you individually. And that's why they say this is a good time to sit down and talk to somebody because what Dave Ramsey is saying today, he might be talking to the 35-year-old, not to the 60-year-old who's, who's watching. And so Susie Orman recently came out and said, for those who are 50 and older, she recommends having two to three years worth of savings just sitting in cash. Hmm. I thought that was a little um, dramatic. She recommended that you can live off, live off cash as markets are going down to hold you off, which is a very, very true statement. And then she went on to say, so this is what kind of gets my bubble here. She says, also, if you're over 50, this is when you should take your money and put it into a Roth IRA. And I'm not really sure why she said, if you're 50, this is a great time to put your money into a Roth IRA. In my opinion, and actually the math says so, you're better off putting your money in, an IRA, in a Roth IRA when you're younger and your taxes are lower. When you're older and you have a higher income, you're paying higher taxes. Really, it's better to put your money into retirement accounts because you get to um, use that as a write-off off your income and your wages. So like I said, there, sometimes I'm not sure why they say what they say. All I know is when I do the math, it is better to put money into a Roth IRA when you're younger. So let's just say you're younger. 30s and 40s, you're starting your career, you have a decent salary, and you're, I say contribute into your 401k up into the match. After that match, pull away any dollars and put it into a Roth IRA because you want tax-free money to live on when you retire. You don't want everything taxable, right? And, and Susie Orman is saying, wait till after 50 to do this. And I'm going to trump her, and I'm going to say, no, don't do that. Do it while you're younger. One thing I will agree with, if you're 50, I still think it's a good idea to contribute to a Roth IRA. Now, it's better late than never because you're going to want some tax-free income. But um, the benefit is when you're younger 
and contributing to a Roth IRA. So you want your ticking time bomb to be the Roth because it's not taxed. You don't want your IRA to be the ticking time bomb, which is a more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation we can have down the road. Um, Mikey, does anybody have any questions about the Roth IRA? Oh, oh boy, somebody threw out the Bitcoin word. <laughs> so somebody just asked, should I have Bitcoin in my portfolio? Speculative, I will say. So Bitcoin is as scary as COVID-19, okay? We know young people are likely to survive COVID-19 versus the older people, right? So Bitcoin, Bitcoin, I feel for younger people, we can survive if we buy Bitcoin, if we lose our shorts off and it might be worth the risk, right? But when we're older, I absolutely in no way, not yet believe Bitcoin's going to be a great investment. I will tell you, Bitcoin is climbing right now. I almost bought into it last night. So it's really interesting. You gave me... You, you, this question came out because it went from 6,000, 6,500, I think a couple of weeks ago, I think it's at $9,500 right now, which means remember a few years ago, it went all the way to 20,000 and everybody bought as Bitcoin, the name gets uh, more popular and it grows and we're like, oh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, people start buying it. Do you know how many people bought it at $20,000 and then it plummeted, it plummeted and now it's starting to have its way back up. So here's the moral of the story. If you're retired and you must, because your son or daughter says, dad, mom, you got to do this. You'd be making the biggest mistake. You make sure you're willing to lose every dime of that money. Now, if you're younger, why not? Just if it goes down and you don't sell it at the right time, why not? You have nothing but time. You have 40 to 50 years to still work. If you feel really good about it. There's also a time to sell Bitcoin, too. And I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of fees involved. I've already looked this all up. Sometimes it's hard to get your money and be careful which one you are buying and what coin vault you're using. I am telling you, it is a it is a, a, a maze trying to figure this out. Trust me, I've tried to a couple of times and, and I bought into it a little bit, um, but I am younger. OK, I'm 41 years old. You know, if I retire at 65, if I lose my shorts on Bitcoin, I, I will make it up. This is one of my little pieces of my portfolio. Remember, I have. Just like my clients are ultimately diversified and we're creating income plans for the future, I'm doing the same thing for me. I'm thinking, oh, this is the one I really hope for. You know, we always can have a hope corner, okay? But we also have a plan corner and a real good strategy corner inside our portfolio. So just um, be careful if you're going to go down um, that route. I don't know how old you are. So when I don't know an, an age, it's harder for me to recommend. But if I'm going on age bracket, be very careful. And I'm not saying for retirees, this might not be an option in the future. There's just too many unknowns right now for me to give you guidance on Bitcoin. Okay. All right. Mikey, any more questions on that Bitcoin story? I say that one more time. Great question. They will push it out as long as possible. If, it, if they are taxed, it will be likely next year unless we really do. Um, if the economy does really blow up, they'll probably waive it. Um, there's a lot of unknowns there. Um, but. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to repeat that. So stimulus checks, if you're getting a stimulus check. I don't think they're going to be taxing you on it. Not at the rate of where the economy is right now. Um, they're always changing. Whatever we say today will change tomorrow. So I don't really have that answer. Um, I will dig deeper into it and see what um, Congress is actually starting to talk and, and what they're starting to say. And I think it all has to do with jobs. Um, I know they want to tax it because they, they want a way to recoup it. And that's kind of the plan. But if they do tax it, it will probably be next year. Um, and so, but I'll look into that for uh, the next uh, week's Facebook Live. I think you think it'd be really great. But again, whatever I say, I think it'll change again. And th that's going to lead me here to home loans and mortgages and kind of stuff. We had lots of questions last week on that. 
Um, Mikey, don't let me forget to tune back into this question because I'm going to talk about that in a minute. I think there's another question. Okay, good. Okay, so I want to talk about people who are laid off and unemployed or fur furloughed and don't have jobs. I really want to address the 401k. Right now, you are allowed to pull money out of your 401ks, even if you're 59 and a half and younger. So historically, when you pull money out of your 401k and you're under 59 and a half, you have a 10% penalty. You also have to pay 20% in taxes. And so right now, the government says you can take a loan. You have to pay it back in a couple of years. I'm not going to hit you with the penalty. But if you don't pay it back, you will be hit with the 10% penalty. You will have that 20% tax. Um, and I think pulling money out of a 401k when the market is going down is a huge mistake. So if you all, whatever you can do, I would just try not to tap into those retirement accounts because it's very hard for people to pay those back later. I've seen it happen many, many times. And then you just get hit with all these taxes um, and penalties and you just don't want that. So I really want to hit on that because it's really important. I would say this. Yep, I didn't miss that. I didn't miss that. Yep, I, I was watching somebody on, it was Yahoo Finance, and they're bragging about how you can do this and so on and so forth. I just want you to be careful. Don't, this is the time to be frugal, not the time to spend. And when we're social distancing and we're a little depressed and we're not sure if we're going to get our jobs back, it is easy to spend money. So if I can encourage you and inspire you not to, Call me. I will I will talk you out of it and I'll tell you why. And I can help you maybe figure out how to cut some corners somewhere else. I am so good at cutting corners when it comes to, hey, let's look at your budget. Let's see where you're at. Can we cut this out? Can we cut this? I'm talking about from the light bill to the electric bill to the the maybe the, the, the cigars and cigarettes you're smoking to the coffee that you're drinking. I have a way and I've helped many people cut their budgets and um, you'd be shocked what I can pull out. So just before you do something like that, maybe reach out to Zinnia and myself and the team and um, we can help you with that um, because I think it would be a really big, big mistake. OK, um, I want you all to take a long term view of the stock market right now because I read something recently and it's right here. It says um, taking long term view in your finances may help avoid making decisions based on panic. It also means planning for long term. They say 49 percent of retirees right now are very much worried about running out of money. That's 50% of retirees. When I read this, I'm looking at this right here, I'm shocked there were so many people. And I think more than now, people are worried because we're printing a lot of money. We have a lot of stimulus checks going out. We have uh, big numbers, lots of money printing. And people know that who's, that who's gonna pay for this bill, it's going to be us, it's gonna be the Americans. And unfortunately, it's also gonna be those baby boomers who are retired and have um, limited sources and in income. And so they're worried about what if inflation really goes up? Historically, inflation went up 3.5%. What if we really go into a, in hyperinflation or a big inflationary period? I really hope that doesn't happen, folks, but I hope you have a plan for it if it does. What if taxes go up? I know a lot of you are thinking, Sharice, if taxes go up and they expire in 2025, my taxes just go up $2,000 more a year that's going to hurt. That's going to take away from a trip. That's going to take away from something else. Um, and so I know a lot of you are worried about that. So you have to be planning for that. If that means I tell you, okay, if you go back to work for two more years, or if you're getting ready to retire, I say you really should work two more years. It's my job to tell you. I talked to a client yesterday and he said, Sharice, I called him. I was supposed to call him at two. I missed my call. I called him back at seven o'clock at night. He's like, oh, wow. Thanks for the call back. He said, I just love how direct and honest you are with me. He basically said, Sharice, we talked earlier. I've been talking to you about stocks. He said, I'm worried about inflation. I'm worried about taxes. And I have $100,000 at TD Ameritrade sitting in cash. And I just feel like I need to get in now. And I literally, this guy's going to be retired in a year. I said, are you really, really, really in a rush to lose money? And he went, what do you mean by that? I'm like, the day you put money into the market, is prob it's probably going to go down. That that's just the luck. Of, of, of the draw. This is how it happens. And if people don't think the market could go down and hit another, another down movement during second quarter, I don't know. I don't know where you've been and where you've been hiding, but you need to wake up. There's a possibility markets could go down. We're only open 25% capacity in only 30 states. That's only 5 million jobs out of, out of, I'm sorry, not 5 million. Out of the 30, yeah, that was 5 million jobs. So I just think the economy is going to be really slow. So don't be in a rush to buy a bunch of stocks 
and go alone. Okay. And I had already bought this client some stocks. We're already actively managing. He had this funny money pot. And he's just like, you know what? I needed to hear that, Sharice. I need to hear that. And I said, if the market does skyrocket and I'm wrong, you're just going to miss a couple of points in the market. Is it worth it for a 20% loss on a hundred thousand dollars that you put in there for what a 5% gain? He went, no. I said, is it worth it for a 10% gain? He went, nope. 20% gain? He said, maybe. And so I said, then that's what we, that's the numbers we have to look at. So you really have to dig deep and, and look at that before you start just jumping all in. So my job is to hold your hand a little bit, give you some direction. I have to get to know you. I know this client really well. So I kind of know where he's coming. I know his antsiness. And, and so anyways, he is not making a move right now. So that's the important thing. And instead he said, you know, let's kind of look at the indexing strategies. Maybe we go with that. So he wants to make some money. All right. All right, let me look here. Oh, I want to talk about, I want to hit, somebody had some questions. They emailed me last week about our whole conversation about, should I refinance my home? Should I, should I be getting a mortgage right now? And so right now is not a bad time to refinance. And so this is what I think you should do. If, if you're thinking about refinancing and you can drop your interest rate to 3.26 and you're you're at 4.46 or 26 right now I instead of and you let's say you have a 30 year mortgage and you've had it for five years instead of refinancing it at a lower rate and doing another 30 year mortgage why don't you talk to different companies out there and I'm gonna tell you who to go to and say okay I'm gonna refinance but I'm gonna do it for a 15 to 20 year term and the chances are that your payment that you used to paying right now will be the same, but you have it paid off a lot faster. You will save so much money and in interest by doing that. Now, if you're going to buy a home, your first time home buyer, there's no better time. Get on it. I'm even considering buying something because I'm like, can interest rates be any better than this? And, and so interest rates can go up, but we're, you know, we're, we're, we're near a, a zero, right? And if you can get a home, uh, a mortgage for 3.25, this should be a really great buying opportunity. So mortgage companies are starting to see new people come to the table for getting a new mortgage. But if you're going to refinance it, I would say refinance it for 15 to 20 years. And this is not that mortgage out. You will save yourselves hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you want to refinance it for 30 years, you can, but you're just paying. It's just so much more money. That's, that's not the Dave Ramsey way. That's not the Susie Orman way. And that's definitely not Sharice's way at Zinnia, and, um, and I just don't recommend it. But I would love to have a conversation with you on something like that. Um, Mikey, does anybody have any questions about that before we move on? Do I have any thoughts on Allianz and how it affects a retired couple? Okay, so Allianz is an interesting animal because Allianz has stock market funds. It also has safe money funds. It also has um, uh, income strategies. It has death benefit strategies. So it's really an open-ended question. But if you are a retiree and you're looking at the company Allianz as an option, um, Allianz is one of the ones we use for certain reasons. And, and, and depending if you're looking for a death benefit play or if you're looking for an inflation protection play in the future, um, Allianz could be a good play, but I would like to see what your end all goals are. So without knowing, hey, what's my budget? What am I trying to get to? How much are you trying to spend? Do we want to use Allianz as an investment in the market and, and have them charge us fees? Or would you want to use the, the other side of that tool where it's more safe? And, and no losses, no fees, and it's more of an income play or an inflation protection play down the road. So great question, but Allianz is a huge company, A-rated company, love them to death. They've done a really great job out there along with a lot of other companies, but Allianz has stepped to the plate. I would love to see if you are somebody who has Allianz, you're not working with me, what Allianz investment vehicle you're going into, because there is an Allianz investment vehicle. There's two of them out there that I am just like, no, I give you a, thumbs down. No way, Jose, would I touch that with a nine foot pole. And by the way, Allianz, you go back to 2008 and nine, they were on one of the biggest 60 minute TV shows because having one of the worst products under the sun. So if you happen to have that one and you're stuck in it, you have to be very careful and tread lightly on how to exit that. 
So I, you know, I, I, I know just a little bit about everything and almost a little bit about every product to get myself in trouble, but I'd like to run the report. So we run, um, that would be for that one, that would be a quantitative analysis. So I can see what the fees are, what is actually doing, how long have you had it? What's the actual returns, real returns? And if there is some sort of income play in it, is that still something that you want? So, um, but I will say, I haven't used as much all us lately because I've had other competitors, other companies out there that were blowing them away. But I do like all So it's so hard. It's so hard for me to give you an answer. So it all depends what you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish and your end all goal. OK, I hope that helped. Was there any uh, questions on that, Mikey? So with all these people laid off, how will Social Security benefits affect retirees long and short term it is going to be a mess <laughs> i'm just straight up telling you it's going to be a bloody massacre i am so nervous about social security i am not optimistic about social security because 30 million people out of jobs the person the retiree who's collecting right now i'd be worried about your paycheck I would be so worried about your paycheck. And you've heard me talk about this before. Um, I've talked about it so much where I'm very optimistic. We have enough in the trust fund to go to like the 2036. Do you think after this epidemic, those numbers have changed? When our comptroller does the math, I'm afraid come 2021, if people have not gotten their jobs, all this work that Trump has done to get jobs on the dockets, get people working, just got thrashed and 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 so i i call it a i don't know if we can stop the bleeding all i know is this trump will do anything to protect his ego okay what i mean by that he will fix anything he will do it at any cost at any way he can to protect his 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 term over the next four years so i would say do we have to print money are we going to have to print money there's an absolute possibility because Trump says during his term, I, I'm making it happen. I'm going to make it work. What happens after Trump? I always used to say life after the paycheck. Let's just call it life after Trump. What really happens here? So I like to look forward. Um, if we can get jobs back and we can get things moving, it's just I, I'm, I've, I've turned my optimistic view to a little pessimistic and, and Social Security trust fund. I will say last year, the last two years, I've been talking about it, that there was one person collecting for three people working, three people that are out there working right now for the one person collecting. That is no longer the case. So now we're kind of spiraling backwards. We're going down this, the, this upward battle and um, I worry about Social Security. And so I know a lot of the boomers plan for Social Security not to be here because there was issues a long time ago on Social Security. But I am worried about it more than ever. Does that mean it's going to be taxed a little more? There's, there's a few things that I personally, if I was in Congress, that I could do to probably help save Social Security. Nobody's talking about it. And the only reason is because no, it means we have to make some cuts. You know, it's, it's tough love. We're going to have to make some cuts. And the cuts are going to come from the younger people, right? And so nobody wants to really talk about it because they want to be reelected. So it gets, it, you know, the, the, the can gets kicked down the road and gets pushed, pushed, pushed. So I would be a little bit worried. I'm, I've changed my tune. I, I'm actually having clients take Social Security now. I really am. So um, I think I need to have a big, big Social Security conversation one day on the show. I don't want to get tied up on that one right now. But um, it is something to, to worry about. It is something to change your plan. So if you plan on waiting to take Social Security to age 70, and things are changing in our environment, maybe we don't wait till 70. Maybe we need to change the plan to 68. I've been talking to my own clients about it. We've had households recently. I said, you know what, let's just go ahead and take yours. We'll wait on yours a couple more years. Before, I wasn't saying that um, because I had more optimism. But when times like this, when we have COVID-19, things that are unprecedented, catastrophic, things we can't explain or things we can't control, it can, it can throw the United States off the block so fast that it, it's a tailspin. And so they're trying very hard to fix this. Um, main, I just broke my pen's help. 
aggravating this conversation can be um, for retirees because I do feel for the retiree. I don't worry about the young people because if you're planning and you're saving and you're not spending money on the new iPhone every other six months, you know, you're going to plan for what if Social Security isn't get, isn't going to be there for you. So I want the young pe person to plan for it. it's not there. I don't think it's going to be there for me. If it is, I don't know how when I do the math. But my primary goal is I'm paying for the baby boomer who's retiring right now. I accept it and I'm OK with that. And we want to protect them because you're, the baby boomer can't go back to work. You can't, it's hard to get a job. You, you can't start saving now. So we need to per, we need to think forward and think as a community. How do we protect our baby boomers and the people who are collecting now? Um, the first first job is we got to get back to work. We got to get our economy back to work. Bottom line. Kind of went off on a tangent there, guys. Sorry. I could talk two hours on that subject. Any other questions on that? Okay. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, I've been a little bit off my uh, game today. So uh, we're going to uh, finish up here. But first... I like to showcase somebody doing something good or something really funny. And I just caught whiff of this. I died laughing. Literally, I just saw this and I've got to read it to you. Uh, Mikey, can you <laughs> put a picture of this poor boy? I want to add, I have a five-year-old little boy and I cannot imagine him doing this. And here's the story. Okay, so pictures up. All right, let me read this to you. Uh, one of our uh, state uh, troopers stopped um, a car this week. This went viral this week because they thought it was an impaired driver, somebody who might have been drinking. Well, he was shocked to find out when he pulled over the driver, the driver was five years old. And he told the trooper he was going to California to go buy his Lamborghini with the three dollars he had in his pocket it might have been the cutest thing i have seen all week and what happened and here here's the story let me just read it to you it was on uh, twitter here the story says i left home after an argument with my mom in which she told me i could not buy a lamborghini so he decided to take the car to california and buy one himself i don't know three dollars in your pocket honey i don't know how that can happen it was a hit. It was, I don't know. They have this, uh, instead of putting him in chains, he, he has some sort of weird thing over his face, of course, for protection. But I will tell you, maybe one of the cutest things I've seen. I can't imagine my son doing something like that. But the big question is, why does a five-year-old know about a Lamborghini? Why does he even know about a Lamborghini? Why would he want a Lamborghini? I think they said they were driving a Dodge Caravan. I wonder if dad had couple of Lamborghinis on the wall. Very interesting. And the fact that he made it, I don't know how many miles and he's never driven before. I don't know, mom and dad, I would start paying attention because he says he's never been in the car before, but he drove so far. Uh, I question if he's been sneaking out late at night. And anybody who's looking and listening, I remember, I think I was 12 years old when I snuck out and drove my dad's car. I was petrified. It was on the grass, but I snuck out. So, um, you got to check your kids. Just like you got to check your retirement portfolios. You got to check your math on, you know, are you doing the right thing? You got to check those kids, you know, make sure you have those alarms and video cameras out to see when they're sneaking out of the house. Anyways, I thought that was a chuckle. I thought it'd give people some light. Um, what, what was that? Okay. So the picture down. Good, good, good. Okay. So, um, anybody that was in Utah. So if you Google Utah highway patrol, you'll find the story. So, that gave me the biggest chuckle. I, I, if you could have heard me laughing, um, you'd probably be shocked. So that was our funny for the week. So we talked about a lot today, everyone. Um, I, I, I did promise I would have some great news. I have to tell everybody, I am a new mother. I know, I'm a new mom. Let me explain what I mean by that. So here's some really fun news. I have a horse, I had a baby, and the baby was born yesterday, and we have a colt. And Kentucky Derby, here we go. So I'm super excited about it. It's my first horse. One of my best friends got me involved and said, this is it, Cherise. So it's a little fun note. I might actually post a picture on Facebook or a video um, of him walking. But all I know is that my cult, we're naming him Forrest because all he wants to do is run, which is unusual for somebody who was born one day later. So maybe some potential there. Um, maybe one of my new investments moving forward. Who really knows? 
Um, I do want to let everybody know that I really appreciate you tuning in. Email me questions. Ask questions on here as we're going, even later. If you share this with your friends, your, your, your neighbors, colleagues, anybody across the United States, see if this could help anybody. I promise I will get better at this. I'm not used to being on TV and doing something live and then having a little checklist in front of me. So we're trying to keep it real. And I promise we will get better. But we want this to be a place for you to ask those questions that you have. And if I don't have the answer, I promise I will get it to you. Um, that's my sure my my sure sure goal is to inspire you, educate you, get you to retirement. I don't care what age you are and beyond, because it would be nice to have a voice, somebody that you could go to without feeling like um, we're going to dig into your pockets and and charge you for it. So feel free that this is a good place to do so, and continue to send me the email. So give me some good stuff to talk about the next week. I do next week. We're going to dive into. We'll always start out with some market talk, what's going on with Trump and the world, but. I really want to dive into some Roth IRA ideas because there's there's a really great time, some neat strategies that we'll go through next week and maybe some things that you can share with your grandkids and your kids moving forward. Um, I also want to talk about the sell away in May. I didn't really have time to talk about it today, but the, the story of, hey, should I sell in May and come back later? Um, be very careful with that because I have some really great stats that say, hey, that's not necessarily the case. Um, I'm looking at them right now, but I ran out of time. So thank you for joining us for another episode of Retirement Coffee Talk. And of course, we had to end it on that note. <laughs> technical, technical problems here. And uh, thank you for being patient and uh, ask your questions. And uh, eventually I'll be doing this in my office, but we're not doing a whole lot of work out of the office. We're doing work out of our home. So that is where I sit, at least for the next couple of weeks. So we see what's going on with COVID-19 and all the testing out there and all the options that are out there. So hang tight, live by design, not by default. If you have any questions, keep typing them in, share this uh, link with somebody else if you think they can use it. And I appreciate your time, your patience, and I appreciate you being kind with all these glitches that we had today. All right. Thank you all. And uh, we'll see you here next week at 3.30. She is a financial planner and advisor. He's the founder and president of Zenia Wealth Management. He's also a popular radio show host. There's a way to have the money in the market and have protected growth. This holistic approach will help people get to and through retirement. Absolutely. You have to change the way that you think. It's not about having these double-digit returns anymore. Things are changing, and you have to have an advisor that's keeping up with the changes. Your outcome is going to become very desirable if you have some sort of coach helping you along the way. And our next recipient for the Media and Communications XP, Sharice. 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 Do not have to risk all your money in the market to survive because it's about the retirement dream.